Hi there everyone. So it's been a couple of days now since the Rough Mix version of Photograph was released. And I must admit, at first, I wasn't sure exactly what I was hearing. I mean, there's some obvious differences in this version with the lack of lead vocals and parts and certainly obvious mix differences. Um, but after some repeat listens, I'm starting to hear more elements here and there pop out that aren't in the original version. I've read some comments online from people maybe taking quite a cynical view of it, thinking that it's actually a modern day remix where they've just taken parts out, um, which is maybe you know a fair opinion, but I want to see if I can give evidence to show that that's not the case. I do personally think this is a rough mix and I want to share some things that I have noticed about it to hopefully help that. So I've got my notes here, I've got the rough version. Uh, an image there to help explain something later and the original version here and um, oh there's one selfish reason I want to do this is that I want you to share with me if there's anything you've heard that I've not heard yet so then I can enjoy this even more okay so feel free to share right let's get to it starting with the rough version straight away there before we can get in the riff that little click in the intro, they always talked about that noise before the main riff being, I think, I'm sure I've read it somewhere, forgive me, I don't have my sources at hand, I should do. The idea that Steve maybe made a mistake hitting the strings before starting recording and they kept it in. But this is just that click sound. Whereas on the original version, you can hear... You've got that sustaining note as well. Vivian called it harmonic on the uh, the vault track by track um, analysis. So it'd be interesting to think, is that something they added after? They thought, oh, we've got this mistake in here. Let's add another little note. Or is the, the sustaining note also a mistake? Was the sustaining note the original mistake? And this rough version is what they took out? I don't know. But it's just, that's a different straight away between the two. Let's crack on. So everything sounds a bit more prominent and upfront in the mix compared to the original. So the guitars, yeah, they're a lot more in your face. There's lack of reverb on them. They're, they're sitting quite quite up front in the mix, not as laid back. And there isn't the reverse kind of snare drum hit, that, that swooshy fading that you'd get um, from reversing the, uh, the snare hit. That little bit there. Um, so that, that's, that's the main points there. These are like little little maybe fancy tricks in the mixing stage to to uh, just make the song a bit more polished. Uh, let's crack on. Now that right there, I thought when I first heard this that of course there's some lead vocals missing but I thought all the vocals that are there are the same as the uh, final version but listen to the way he says you're the only one, especially the one at the end, just how he ends it. Like wow. A weird kind of ending that I was thinking, oh, am I just hearing that because it's a bit more bare and stripped back? Was it always like that? Well, let's, let's have a listen. Here, there, you're the only one. Not wow. So that's, I only heard that today as well when I was listening to it. Um, so that's quite funny. Yeah. 
Very kind of countryish. So that that is an obvious difference to it. Um, I haven't listened to a lot of the, or tried to listen if if all the vocals are, are slightly different. I mean, some of it's double tracked on the rough version, which is the same on the the release. But uh, that shows you there that we have a slightly different vocal take, at least on that line, if not more. But uh, that's that's up to yourselves to find out. Also, uh, let's continue. As we get into the, the kind of heavier section where the bass and the other rhythm guitars come in, it does sound a lot heavier. Yeah. Again, just maybe with the mix of everything being up front, lack of reverb in there. Let's get to the pre-chorus now. So straight away for me, I, I I felt, wow, that sounds so much more fuller. And uh, there's a certain reason for it, but let's listen to the, the original as well. So on this original version, this is where I'm going to bring in my image. Um, pan to one side, you've got the keyboard sound which could be a keyboard as well as the um, swelled in guitar. I'm sure Steve talked about that before. You've got that sound on, on one side, and then on the other side, you've got the heavier guitar. Whereas on the rough version, um, you've got it, you've got both things happening on both sides. So you've got rhythm guitar here as well as the keyboard sound, rhythm guitar here as well as the keyboard sound. Yeah, let's listen back again to that. See how that sounds compared to this? So on the rough version, it sounds fuller and you think, oh yeah, that's great, sound, everything's bigger. Um, but when I first heard that, it made me think about the idea of arrangement and what Def Leppard and Mutt became really good at. Is that, let's say, you know, we usually you want your chorus to, to pop and be the biggest thing in the song. And if you've got such a great pre-chorus like that, where it sounds huge, your chorus isn't going to have the same type of impact. So could this possibly be a situation where they decided to strip back the pre-chorus, sound a bit more bare, and the way to do that was to have the um, just the keyboard bit sounding part panned here and the, the heavier guitar panned to the other side? instead of having both on both sides. That could be it. Um, also remind me of what Joe used to say, I mean, more so when talking about hysteria, he, he compared it to making, where you make a film, where you get to the editing stage and some stuff doesn't make it, and some stuff does. And it made me think about the idea of them recording these songs. Maybe every song was recorded in a way where they had an option to make it sound as heavy. So there were multiple guitars on either side. Because it, it doesn't sound like to me that even though you just have the keyboards here on the left and the, the heavy guitars on the right, it doesn't sound like all the heavy guitars have then just been moved to the right. It just sounds like, no, we'll keep the ones that are on the right, we'll lose the ones that are on the left. So it's not as though it's just a case of panning them all over. Um, so the idea that they're off, oh, we'll cut those guitars that hasn't made the edit. Uh, it's quite, it made me just think of that, that you know, what, what Joe said in the past. Um, and I thought, I thought that was quite interesting. And then also on the, the backing O's, because I had it in a later note here, so I'm just looking through it. Um, let's just listen to, try just listen to the, the vocals on it.
Now, especially on that second pass, when you hear the O's, the first set of O's were sounding like they were around here, then the second set were sounding like they were again, one harmony pan one side, one harmony pan the other. And that's not like that in the final version. They stay more so down the middle. Here, there, they just kind of stay, stay here. You don't hear them kind of on either hard edge of your ear. So I thought, I thought that was pretty, pretty cool to hear that. That's that's what it could have been like at the time. Here's a rough mix. What we're we gonna do? Oh, we're not sure yet, but we'll just we'll make it basic. We'll have everything on either side, uh, just to make a nice stereo spread. But obviously, as I was saying. That makes the pre-chorus sound huge. So let's hear the pre-chorus going into the chorus and hear how that sounds. I mean, the chorus there still sounds great, but the, the, the backing vocals are very are very up there. And, and right in front of your face there, there's hardly any any type of reverb on. Whereas you hear on the, the actual version. You can hear they're just sitting back, and again, they're not hard panned. They're they're maybe just around about this area here and the spread. So you go back in vocals either side here, the lead vocal down the middle. Then you can hear the the clean guitar part a bit better on either side on the on the original version. So again, just just the idea of filling it out and, and making a, a nicer sound and mix. But it's cool to hear the back and vocals really up front. Um, you can really hear. Jewel doing uh, the, the high one there, which is uh, it's cool to hear. Also, another note, excuse me for going back to the pre chorus, but it sounds as though the cymbal crashes aren't panned the way they should be. Hey, those three cymbal crashes on the left there, usually they should be panning from left to right, I think. Well, certainly there, you can hear the first one is panned hard right. Let's go back to the, the rough. Well, maybe that's right. No, my mistake. The symbols do seem to be where they should be. Uh, my next note is talking about the little lick after the first chorus, so let's hear that. It might sound odd, but this is one of my favourite parts of this rough mix, because it's such a pure recording of a single guitar. It might sound odd, but I feel as though you don't hear that a lot in Def Leppard's music because a lot of the time the layers of guitar, sorry, layers of guitar? Yeah, layers of guitar. <laughs> um, because the guitars are so layered up, you don't necessarily hear the individual performance coming through. It's not until we hear demos where you, you get a sense of the, the pure, the most pure sound of the guitars there. I mean, that's why I like, Steve's solo on the When Love and Hate Collide demo, I think is one of the purest, the purest recordings of hearing what's, what Steve is, musically. And because uh, even, even with solos, you hear a lot of the time they could be double, tra uh, double tracked or even trickle, 
Jesus, they can be double tracked or either triple tracked. Um, so you don't necessarily get that single performance coming through. So I, I always love hearing, yo, you can tell that's just one guitar and it sounds like they're in the room with you. I mean, you could you could imagine that Steve just in the room with you playing, or or, or possibly Pete. Let's hear it on the actual version. In the actual version, I think you can hear at least three guitars. You probably hear that one in the middle. There's one on the very left, sounding very pinch harmonicy. You can hear all these high kind of clicks from it. And there's another one on the right as well. So that's cool. I, I, I always love hearing, hearing stuff like that. Um, my next note, not really related to a specific part, but I'll play, I'll play a little bit of both together so you can hear what I'm going to talk about. So I put note here, I feel as though the rough version is very, very slightly faster and also a little bit closer to standard tuning or tuning, which which would make sense because if, if you play guitar, you'll, you'll know that the photograph is horrible to play along to because it's it's slightly below standard tuning and it's not... Uh, it's not an E flat tuning, which is what the band tuned to now. It's in between, which is a, it's something you wouldn't purposely do. So I've always thought that that's down to possibly problems with with the tapes when they're recording. I mean, Mike Shipley used to always talk about the tapes for Pyromania turning transparent with all the overdubs they were doing, but it's also not on. It's not unknown for bands to get to either the mixing stage or mastering stage and think, oh, can we just speed this song up a little bit or slow it down a, lo a little bit? And you wouldn't be able to do it too drastically because otherwise you could make the band sound like Chipmunks or Barry White. So it'd be very slight changes in the speed there. And I, I do feel as though, I mean, we'll go we'll go from the original back to the rough and see what you think if you if you agree with me. But... I do think the original, slightly slower, slightly uh, flatter in tuning. Okay. Um... The last thing for me is in the last pre-chorus. So I'm not going to go through the whole song. There, I mean, like I say, there's obvious uh, differences with the lack of lead vocals. The solos sound the same. It's just obviously in the mix with some of the um, the the rhythm guitars. But let's let's get to this last pre-chorus. Just right in that last fill before the chorus, I can hear some sort of tape scrubbing noise or possibly backwards recording type thing again. So you can hear it with me. It's like, it's, uh, it might be hard for me to kind of <laughs> to, to point out unless you, you know what tape scrubbing sounds like. Um, or something going backwards. But let's listen to the original as well and um, we'll compare. So 
see there's nothing there. It's very clean. So where, where Jewel would normally say, I gotta have you, that's where I'm hearing the, the scrubbing. There's something in there. I hear it on both ears. Um, but yeah, that's, that's the only other thing. I don't have any other notes here. I put as well, it sounds like the fade out is, um, is very, very similar to, to what's on the actual record. Um, but yeah, so quite a few differences there. I want to have more of a listen to the lead vocals to see if I can catch any other changes in the, uh, in the deliveries. Uh, but I think that shows that it's not just the final vocal there. Uh, so yeah, fun. It'd be interesting to hear the other rough mixes as well. And of course the demos can't wait for them to come out. Uh, but yeah, like I said, let me know if you've heard anything else in here and uh, share it with me so I can enjoy this even more and do more of that fanatical, analytical style listening. Okay, take it easy. <laughs>